pouring down to rain today. Watch out. Greetings. Welcome to Junior Curator Academy, your inside look under the cone. I'm David. And I'm Sophie. Join us from the Museum of Glass in Tacoma, Washington to feel your curiosity, ignite exciting ideas, and discover new ways of being creative. Each episode, we will showcase a piece of the week in which we'll take an in-depth look at an artist and one particular work of art. We will explore the motivation of the artist, the time period in which the piece was made, as well as the process and materials. All activities are aligned with Washington State standards and are easily accessible for home learners and educators to fulfill academic credits. In today's first episode of Junior Curator Academy, we will learn about artist Richard Marcus and his glass teapot series. In addition, we will learn about the political climate that inspired Marcus as an artist. In particular, we will look at his Stars and Stripes teapot. These are the Junior Curator key terms that will be used in this episode of Junior Curator Academy. Parents and teachers are urged to use these key terms in conjunction with the episode to impart lessons that follow Washington State education standards. Please remember the key terms can be accessed at any point during this episode by following the link. Watch and listen with your Junior Curator Scholar and help them identify these words as the episode goes along. We hope you enjoy the show. Come on, Sophie. Let's go. Let's check this out. Wow, it's very quiet in here, and we have the whole place to ourselves. Look at all this stuff. This is an exhibition by Dick Marquis called Keepers. Dick's a special person, and all this work is made by him. He calls them Keepers because he's had these pieces for years and years. Do you have anything that you've kept forever? I sure do, Sophie. I have gifts and jewelry given by past students. Well, here we are, one of my favorite parts of the exhibition, the glass teapot case. We have eight different glass teapots in our case. Let's examine this one here. What does the pattern remind you of? Absolutely, the stars and stripes. Let's look at the shape of the teapot as well as the one above called silhouettes and stripes. Now remember, a silhouette is just an outline. First, let's see what we have here. A handle, a lid, a body. In Dick's teapots, the lids don't actually come off and they don't actually pour. Dick Marcus has taken a common object and made it into art. Dick's teapots are also funny and cute. How about a fun family activity? Teapots have made their way into pop culture in many, many ways, from nursery rhymes to cartoon characters. How many can you and your family come up with? Well, that was cool. Well, let's get back to work now. The pattern on the teapots are created by using a technique called Marini. Let's look at it together now. Marini is an ancient technique developed in the 15th century by glass artisans. Dick Marcus uses it in a new and innovative ways. Now let's meet Dick. Dick was the first person in his family to go to college. He and his older brother Bill were the first people in their extended families to finish high school. He went on to become a student at the University of California at Berkeley in 1963, where he enrolled in a ceramics course. In this class, he was influenced by funk art. This Jim Nutt piece, painted in 1969, shows you the bright colors and comic art that we see in Dick's work, and of course, his humor. It was at Berkeley that Dick also discovered glass. When Marvin Lepofsky was hired to teach, he was immediately transfixed. Dick began to teach himself how to work with glass by going to the library, studying, and watching Marvin. In 1969, Dick received a scholarship to study in Venice, Italy, then the center of glassmaking. He ended up studying at the famous Vanini factory. 
There he learned the ancient Italian glass techniques. He worked side by side with glass blowers. Ick was delighted by the colors and immediately recognized he could use the colors of the American flag in his work using Marini. And he could make letters. What's so important about this is that he was using this ancient technique in a new way and he was doing it before anybody else. Whoops. In 1982, after a long teaching career at UCLA, Dick moved to Whidbey Island in Washington State where he has been ever since working and making all this glass. The American flag has held great fascination for Dick ever since the 1960s and 70s when it was a symbol of counterculture movement, which was anti-war and anti-establishment. Let's take a close look at our teapots. We have a functional object that Dick has made precious. They also look like they are moving with purpose. The stripes create a sense of movement. The teapots, they have attitude. Do they comment on American culture? Are they bold, fearless teapots? Do they represent America today? If so, who is represented and who isn't? What do you think? What do all the animals and insect silhouettes represent? Do they represent Dick's love of nature? Or do they represent missing species? You get to decide what messages the teapots are sending. Teapots were invented in the Yuan Dynasty in China by the great Khan Kublai Khan, the leader of the Mongolian Borjigan clan, in 1271. At first, teapots were small, and the tea was drank directly from the spout. Tea was drank much earlier, though, from bowls. A legend has it that servants were boiling water for Emperor Shenong in 2737 BC, when leaves blew into the water and created an infusion of tea, which he drank. Voila, tea! Clay teapots in China became widespread in the Ming Dynasty, such as the famous Yixing teapots. Family activity. Tea ceremonies are common in many cultures and religions. What types of tea rituals are you already familiar with and which are you interested in learning more about? Research and discover with your family. Well, that was fun. Glass is an expensive material to make and requires some special equipment, like what we have here at the museum. Dick last visited Museum of Glass to work with our team in 2016. Let's take a look back at that now. The last few years I've been working on this process called granulari, which is this uh, lumpy, Italian lumpy ware. And that's what I've been working on the last few years, and that's what I'm sort of uh, co concentrating on here at the museum. And here we go. Rolling up the marini around that glass too. Dick Marquis is a pioneer of glass in the Pacific Northwest. He was one of the first to bring Italian techniques to the Pacific Northwest. Remember that trip to Venice and the Vanini family? Dick is very particular about technique. He believes that you need good craftsmanship to express your ideas as art. Dick is friends with another great Northwest artist, Dale Chihuly. Dale sometimes consults with Dick about technique. Lots of artists interested in glass have flocked to the Pacific Northwest, and there are tons of glass studios here because of people like Dale and Dick. Most of the time, it's also cooler weather to work in. There are now more glass artists here than in Italy. This feeds the local economy and creates jobs in places like the Museum of Glass and Chihuly Garden and Glass, where people like me work. Hey David, what's the piece of the week? Well, let's check it out. It's good to look at objects from different perspectives. So I have asked our brand new education program manager, Jabari, what he thinks about our teapots. Hello, David. You have an advanced degree in sculpture and have spent a lot of time working in museums on the East Coast. When you look at our two pieces, what comes to mind? What do you think? Take it away, Jabari, while I make us some tea. Well, thanks, David, for asking me that question. I think that learning how to look at art is an important skill set that can be translated to many different disciplines. Uh, when you first look at these pieces, what is one of the first things that you notice? For me, one of the first things I notice is that these pieces are teapots made of glass. What do we all know about teapots? What are they used for? Does this object have a purpose? Is it art for art's sake? No, not in this case. 
Teapots have a use. They are vessels, usually used to store tea. Okay, so now we know one thing about this object just from looking at it. Tea has a history in the United States that relates back to the beginning of the American Revolution. In response to the American colonists being taxed by England without feeling their political and economic interests were adequately being represented, 342 cases of British tea were dumped into Griffin's Wharf in Boston, Massachusetts on December 16, 1773. This was the event that sparked the American Revolution, which ultimately led to the United States of America being established as its own nation, independent of British rule. This second observation that I made is the colors and the patterns on the surface of the pots. What are they reminiscent of? What might this artist be trying to tell us with this patterning? To me, these colors look like they are trying to remind the viewer of the American flag. I know this isn't exactly what the American flag looks like, but it is certainly borrowing from the flag aesthetically. The red and white stripes, the blue square with the white stars all elicit a patriotic feel in America. The teapots aren't meant to be exactly the flag though. They're meant to make you think of it. Why do these pieces want us to think of the American flag? And why in conjunction with the teapot? In the silhouettes and stripes teapot, we have images of animals instead of stars. These animals are stand-ins for stars. Each of the stars in the American flag represents an American state. What could the animal silhouettes represent? We know that donkeys and elephants are used to represent the Democratic and Republican parties. Could each of these animals represent a different political view? Could they be a call to conservation? Are these disappearing species? When really trying to see an object, I think it's important to look at the historical context in which it was made. Every object has a history. The people that make objects have history as well. When I look at sculptures, I always ask three important questions. When, where, and why? These pieces were made in 1997 and they used the stars and stripes motif borrowed from the American flag. The technique used to make these designs is the Kane and Marini technique. We know that Richard Marquis lived and studied in UC Berkeley during the glass movement in the 1960s and early 70s. He also studied abroad in the Vanini School in 1969. So this time period is important in his life. Often when an artist receives their training, they start to examine themes and ideas that carry over for the rest of their careers. What was going on in the world in the 1960s? Especially with artists. At that time in Berkeley, many artists were protesting the Vietnam War. From 1965 to 73, the U.S. was involved in the Vietnam War. Many in the U.S. felt the war was unjust and that American soldiers didn't belong there. The flag was a symbol of freedom that many counterculture groups and artists adopted. Prior to the 60s, the American flag was treated with a sense of reverence and was not used in popular culture. In many senses, during this time, the flag was rebranded as a symbol of resistance. An American flag is burned at the height of the demonstration. Both President Johnson and Francisco It was used as clothing, as the design for musical instruments. It was set on fire as a statement about freedom, how it was under attack. The flag that always embodied patriotism began to also embody political dissent. Using the flag in ways that many found trivial was rebellion itself. It was during the late 1960s that Richard Marquis made his first pieces incorporating the American flag. He made the American acid capsule and stars and stripes bottle during this time. Both were made at Vanini. Both used techniques that he learned while there. He was learning the techniques that carried over into art that was using the counterculture motifs of the American flag. This brings us back to the stars and stripes teapot made in 1997. The teapot has incorporated that spirit of rebellion from the 60s into a teapot that is distorted to the extent that it is not functional. Is that something that the artist is trying to say about the country? By the time this piece was made, the American flag's usage and Americana culture was commonplace. For Marquis, the distortion and usage of the flag as protest harkened back to his early adult life. What are the symbols of resistance now? Currently, our country is going through an unprecedented time. What are the possible ways to make art that is a means of protest in this time? Dick Marquis was able to find the freedom of dissent 
and glass pieces that use the American flag. Do you have any symbols? Thank you, Jabari. You're welcome. All right. Now that we have analyzed these works from a multitude of angles and perspectives, it's time for your junior curator assignment. But first, I want to take another look at the label on the teapot case. Now, what you can do is write your own label and tell us what your thoughts are on these teapots. You can use up to 500 words and email it to us at juniorcurator at museumofglass.org. We'll post the labels next to the teapots in a virtual gallery for all to see. Remember all the angles we looked at? Now, it's your turn to try. Just a few rules, though. No bad words, no copying. Use your own language and imagination and have fun. Once completed, you'll receive a sticker from Museum of Glass to work on achieving junior curator status. Well, that's all the tea for now. Thanks for watching Junior Curator Academy. Your inside look under the cone. Join us next time as we look into the collaboration of artists Jerry Hovenick and Ralph Harvey and their piece based on the magic flute. Until next time. Bye. bye.